I was minding my own business one day when I learned a fun fact. In 1887, a railroad line was built right through the middle of Syracuse, Utah. And at the end of it was a bathing resort where you could go splash around in the Great Salt Lake and have a private shower at the end, which you didn't get very often at home, if ever, unless you were rich. And the whole ride cost you 50 cents. It was super cheap for a fun day. And at the end of this line, besides the bathing resort, was a super fun, like curved, Y-shaped little turnaroundy thingy with a straight piece of track at the end so that the train could turn around without having to use a turntable. I had to know where this was. I could not let this go. And this book, as delightful as this book is, and huge, this book did not have a map of where the railway was. So I had to figure it out the old fashioned way by doing some good old historical research. I did some digging and found a Google map of where the rails might have been. It gives me a general idea, but I don't know how exact this is. I don't even know what their source is. Um, It is kind of, but not super helpful. Like if Wikipedia is the first stop for a research project, this map is like a step below that. Not useless, but not particularly useful either. I need to corroborate this Google map, so... I turned to more information at, of course, Google Maps. Only this time, I had the power of satellite imagery available. And I noticed this really interesting feature going through Syracuse, Utah. So I got to thinking, what other remnants of this railroad are out there? Like, could I actually see pieces of this over 140 years later? I still had to get more exact on the location. So, off I went to the museum. As I got out of my car, a nice volunteer walked over and said, Sorry, museum's closed. He was just coming to put a sign on the window uh, because their curator was sick and nobody else was scheduled to be there that day. But I told him, I only need a few minutes. I just need to go in and use your library to get information about this railway. And he took me in and he told me all of his stories. Now I'm far too awkward and far too anxious to say, hey, can I interview you on video for this YouTube video that I'm making? Uh, So I didn't do that, but I took some mental notes. They even have this super cool model that shows where the rails were. So I still need to get more exact. Their library had been rearranged and some of the uh, items in there were moved off to an archive location, um, I'm guessing in an office. And even their cool model wasn't necessarily to scale or exact. So I had to go off on my own adventure and find it myself. That's when I realized I'm actually friends with someone who lives on one of those weird pieces of property that I saw on Google. I had to talk to him, but I can't just text him. My brain tells me that I can't bother people. It says I can't be even the slightest bit of a burden on another man's life. So I just go to this park. I'm about to pull into what I think will be a really cool park. Uh, It's actually built on the rail grade. So the parking lot is where the railroad was. And it looks like there's some structures there. It's hard to tell from Google, but um, I guess I'll find out. I'm almost there. Uh, But apparently there are also pieces of the old rail uh, still in place. So we'll check that out. It's a pretty cool park. There's a little exercise thing here. So I guess it's not so much of a park as a trail. Um, And it's just right off the road here. It's a pretty cool spot. I don't know if you can hear, but there are little zaps of electricity going through. You can hear the zaps. You can't hear it. I listened and you just can't hear it. But trust me, it is audible 
volts of electricity going through the wires above your head. So I came to a point where uh, it wasn't super clear if I was allowed to be there. It was obviously not a place where they wanted me to be, but there also wasn't a sign. In doing some more searching, I realized that for the last several years, I have been driving right by a curved mound of dirt with a flat top that is perfectly sized to hold a train. Here I am near the entrance to Antelope Island State Park here in Syracuse. I have determined the location of where the old railway tracks were and it is still visible so I'm going to go look at it. Okay, I'm now standing where the straight portion would have been and I found something interesting. It's mostly obvious what you're looking at when you see it from the ground. So you can see the rail grade went up uh, probably about six feet. That's how tall I am, and it's about up to my head if I could stand next to it. And back to this other timeline. As an avid barefoot person who is trying to make that part of my YouTube shtick for some reason, I decided it would be a great idea to explore among the thistles and the weeds. But then I stepped on some goat heads and it was all over at that point. But I had a thought since I was coming down through this that I better go just in case. And I'm glad I did because I found a huge patch of goat heads right here. This spot just feels so remote. Like the road is just over this little patch of weeds here. Um, there's Phragmites and thistles, it looks like. They're really tall. And I can barely see my car. I'll just spin around. It just feels really remote, even though I'm in the middle of all of this traffic. There's some deer popping up looking at me. This is really steep. This would probably be easier without the hiking shoes. But right up here is the patch of goat heads. Really, what it came down to is I had to text my friend. I might die if I text him, but if I preserve my life by not texting him, I would regret not knowing for sure for the rest of my life. Even if he said no, even if he humiliated me by saying, Carl, you are so annoying. Leave me alone and quit asking me questions and bugging me. Gosh, I'm so busy. Leave me alone. I had to know. My friend was actually unfazed by my request to come see his property. And he was actually excited. I told him I had access to a metal detector and we made a plan to get together and metal detect on his property. And I didn't see anything obvious. In fact, what I did see was a little bit interesting because he had heard that the tracks were on a different part of the property. What I was seeing was on another part of the property. And either way, didn't match what I had heard at the museum. I had to do more research. So I did some digging. I remembered that the nice man at the museum said that the tracks were in place until the 1970s, which means I should be able to dig up some old pictures of them, right? So I went online and I found some old aerial photographs. And guess what? They clearly show the exact location of the rails. And they are, in my experience, unusually simple to georeference and find exactly where those rails would have been.
that metal detecting was exciting and overcoming my fear of texting my friend was also exciting. But what was really exciting, we have to transcend space and time once again to experience. I was walking around this whole area, this whole time, not realizing that these giant berms were actually the old rail grades themselves. Oh my gosh, oh I see it. So right up at the top, there's the rails sticking through. Right there, there's some pretty old looking ties. And then here are the tracks for the old Syracuse wire railway line. Okay, here I am at the railway behind me. I hear a train coming. I don't think that I'm not supposed to be here, but they would probably appreciate if I'm not on the tracks when they're driving by. So I'm gonna head back to my car. This is so steep. I'm gonna wear my proper hiking gear. See how this goes. Probably better than any shoes I have. That's a massive goat head mass right there. Just FYI, if you're the Syracuse Parks and Recreation Department, there are goat heads over here, like crazy. I was pretty pumped, and I decided to do most of a pull-up for the camera on my way out. I hope that you enjoyed this adventure and learned something exciting. Please subscribe. When I get to 100, I'm going to do a special live stream from an exotic location. I'm super excited. Let's get to that point. See you next week.